This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In the last lecture, we made reference to data warehousing and data mining. Uh, really, the term data warehousing has to some extent been overtaken by the term big data. Uh, and this refers to extremely large collections of data that can be analysed to reveal patterns, trends, associations, especially relating to human behaviour interactions. And this last part of this an an analysing to reveal patterns, trends and so on is really what was done by data mining. You had this great mound of, of data, a lot of it not very interesting, uh, but rather like mining, you go through lots and lots of kind of rock, which is very ordinary, and occasionally you'd find a nugget of gold. Uh, and that's the, the, the analogy which is being uh, used here. Lots and lots of data. If you analyse and look very carefully through it, you will find information which is very useful to you. It really all started, uh, it was known as data warehousing then, uh, really in supermarkets, particularly uh, large supermarkets in the States like Walmart. Uh, and they introduced loyalty cards. Uh, and then when people were checking out, had their groceries scanned and so on, yeah, you would uh, scan also your loyalty card through the reader uh, and it would give you some points. Uh, and of course, this this might induce you to keep going back there so that you could redeem your points at the end of the year or something. But <clears throat> the real prize for Walmart was not so much the loyalty, but uh, as you scan your card, it records against you uh, all your purchases and they typically keep this for uh, you know five years all your purchases in the Walmart supermarket in five years so they build up a very detailed pattern of your consumption really and then what they would do is you, they would look I mean the uh, obvious one is just to look for the kind of products you're interested in uh, and uh, then they could maybe email you with special offers uh, they could take a little bit further if you suddenly began buying, let's say, baby snappies. They would uh, deduce there was a new baby in the house. Uh, and, and then maybe six months later, they could send you an email suggesting, you know, baby food as the, the child was being weaned. Uh, and then maybe even four or five years later, they could email you, uh, you know, with offers for maybe school uniforms or, or, or something of that, that sort. Uh, so this uh, enabled this almost... Uh, direct marketing through email, uh, but also it revealed patterns, maybe uh, patterns related to what people preferred to buy on a Monday, Tuesday, Friday, etc. there. Uh, it revealed associations. If you buy product A, you tend to buy product B. Uh, and maybe we could do better if we brought products A and product B together on the shelf to make it easy for you to buy those two together. Or maybe what you do is actually wrap them together into one of these kind of multi-buys. Uh, and that will uh, induce people to, to buy. So that was the, the kind of beginnings of it. And the, uh, the predictions they could make were, were in a way, really very, very uh, accurate in many ways indeed. Now, it's then progressed onto this uh, word big data. Uh, and the characteristics of big data, sometimes known as the three Vs uh, here, uh, and first of all, there is a huge variety of data. Uh, it is no longer just uh, the quantities of products you buy uh, and when you buy them, what date, what time of day you buy them. Uh, they'd also record you know, which shelf it was on and so they could record the effectiveness of putting uh, products on a high shelf, a medium shelf, a low shelf and so on there. But also they, they can begin to uh, record all with geographical information. Uh, so the way things are kind of moving at the moment uh, is if they uh, have you know, your mobile phone number when you go into a store, they could track you through the store. Uh, they know even if you don't buy something, whether you pause in front of a particular cabinet, indicating you might be interested in that object and uh, uh, so on. Uh, and then, you know, at checkout, they could maybe link the mobile phone number with your face and do facial recognition. Uh, so now, even if you appear at a store without your mobile phone and without your uh, loyalty card, they know who you are, and, and again can build up, uh, uh, even without you purchasing, build up the sort of products uh, that you might be interested in. So there's all sorts of graphical information, numerical information, quantitative information, qualitative information, and so on, uh, which is uh, uh, text information if you're sending uh, emails or texts to people, 
uh, voice information, perhaps if you telephone uh, the company and you're, you're talking about something, they may be able to pick up key words that you expressed an interest, maybe in life insurance or travel insurance uh, and so on. There is a huge volume of data, quite obviously, if you're keeping huge amounts of data on every customer who visits a supermarket, all your branches of supermarkets for five years, the volume of data is, is fantastic just on purchases. And by the time you add on all the other sort of information that might be there, uh, the volume is, is fantastically high. And it requires special IT techniques really to, to handle this and to analyze it. And velocity. The data is continually arriving very, very quickly from lots and lots of different input devices, essentially. Uh, and it builds up very, very quickly into this high, high volume. I've got down here uh, another uh, item, another V, which is sometimes added on to these three Vs, uh, and that is veracity. Uh, in other words, uh, are we confident that the data that is being held is correct? Uh, so no doubt, uh, sometimes you borrow somebody's loyalty card. If you're going to the supermarket or to buy or to buy petrol, you may as well take somebody else's card, your friends, your relatives' card, and get some points for them. Uh, to what extent can they be uh, assured that what is registered against the loyalty card is actually you? Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful about uh, <coughs> drawing some conclusions whether or not the data is actually reliable and true. Uh, velocity, uh, here we have just constant updates from every purchase. We kind of talked about that. The volume of data, I've been through some of this uh, already. Retailers keep uh, loyalty cards swiped at the checkout. Websites, uh, they know, you know, it's like the Sting song, every click you make, are they watching you? They know every page you visited. Even if you don't buy something, they can register a, uh, uh, an interest. They know what adverts you uh, have uh, gone on to. They know the next website you're probably going to be visiting uh, as well. Uh, we know that uh, if you upload uh, photographs to Facebook and the like, uh, facial recognition can be used to tag those. So they can build up then uh, uh, people you know, groups of friends, uh, and therefore they can maybe target a group of people rather than just individuals and so on. Mobile phone companies obviously know who you've rung, to whom you've sent texts. They can analyze the texts for keywords and so on. They know every location your phone has been at. Uh, and of course, this is from time to time being used by the police uh, to try to trace who was at the particular crime scenes. Internet providers and browser providers know, obviously, you, they, you, you can see an internet browser. They, they know your history of browsing. Uh, you can obviously delete that on your local machine. Whether or not uh, the, uh, the uh, internet service provider deletes it or whether Google uh, actually deletes it is another matter. They know the search terms that you've entered. Uh, and banking systems, they know every receipt uh, you pay in, every payment you make. They know what you've bought through your credit card. Uh, they can analyze that uh, according to your spending habits. Uh, and again, uh, they can sell that information uh, to retail organizations who may well be able to make use of it. Uh, variety, won't go through all of this uh, here, I've mentioned it uh, a bit. Uh, they can, your browsing uh, uh, habits, your browsing favorites, your favorite sites and so on there. Uh, there is whether or not if a, an advert comes up on uh, the page, whether or not you're liable to click on that, whether you are kind of susceptible to that sort of advertising and so on. Uh, if you're shopping at Amazon, they know the sorts of books you're interested in, spy thrillers, romance, history, biographies. They know the sort of music you're interested in, you know, heavy rock, punk, classical, whatever it's going to be, and, and so on. So huge amount, often unstructured information, comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes. It's not all simple product code volume that you've bought on a particular day. It, it's, it, it's a great variety of information, which again uh, can be quite challenging to some of the IT systems. What they use then is what's called big data analytics to trawl through this data and to try to make use of it. 
uh, data mining, I've kind of mentioned this uh, patterns and associations, clustering of data, sometimes called sequences uh, of uh, data. Predictive analytics, uh, trying to predict your reaction to certain events and offers. So if you go to an airline, and let's say you keep going there regularly, they will know uh, whether or not you are likely to be attracted to buying a seat uh, with a bit more legroom, you know, a seat at the front of the aircraft or something of that type. They will know whether you tend to book luggage into the hold or whether you're always in hand luggage and so on. They will know obviously the routes you go to. And again, they can predict somebody's going on a, a flight that's maybe over four hours, are they likely to want to upgrade to a bit more legroom? If it's a flight for under two hours, maybe they're not likely to do that, but maybe over four hours, <coughs> maybe they're going to be attracted by the upgrade. Text analytics, we said analyzing texts, uh, emails, word processing documents to extract useful information. Uh, voice analytics, the same with voice, what you're actually saying. And statistics, used to analyze trends, correlations, and so on. For example, Google uh, will identify, for example, uh, flu and influenza outbreaks before very often health authorities have. Because as soon as you come down, feeling a bit achy, a bit of a headache, uh, you begin to Google uh, maybe influenza cures or influenza symptoms or something of that sort. And if they see lots of people in a particular town beginning to Google uh, for symptoms or remedies for particular disease, they conclude that there's probably an outbreak of flu in, in that particular town. And they will know this long before you've gone to your doctor about it or long before maybe you've visited the chemist uh, about it. Uh, and they can track the procession the, uh, uh, as epidemics kind of flow through uh, the country, really, uh, at least as accurately uh, or at least in, 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 in advance of what the government medical authorities will be able to do. There are certain dangers with big data. It, it does cost you money to install these very high volume systems that are capable of dealing with this great variety of data. There is regulation. Uh, many countries have got uh, data protection uh, legislation, which you have to be careful to comply with, otherwise there's likely to be hefty penalties to pay. Many, even very respectable uh, companies, have lost data through hacking, lots of credit card numbers going missing and uh, uh, so on. Uh, and even if it's not credit card numbers, uh, your, your purchasing habits uh, getting out, if you like, uh, and maybe being sold to other people. The veracity, what happens if they're holding information which is not true about you, and maybe that information is sold on, and there is some adverse consequence uh, of that information uh, being sold to somebody, uh, adverse consequence to you. And employee monitoring. It is becoming more and more frequent that employees are monitored throughout businesses. You're given a, a kind of identity badge, uh, but your position in the business can be monitored. Some of them <coughs> even will pick up your speech. Some of them will pick up not just your speech, but the tone of speech, so they know if you're angry or excited about something or, 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 or the like. Uh, and obviously that kind of employee tracking has got, again, privacy dangers. So companies must be uh, a little bit careful in the use of this big data. If uh, some of their stakeholders began thinking uh, that the use of the big data was harming them in some ways, then of course you could do damage to the organisation.